In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add captions and subtitles in Premiere Pro. Hey guys, my name is Scott and I make full and mini tutorials like this one on Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and freelancing tips, so please do consider hitting the subscribe button and hitting the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of those. Okay, let's get into how we can add captions in Premiere. I have a video clip here that I want to add captions to. This is a video from my other channel, All Sports History. If you guys want to check that out, you can by clicking the link at the top of the screen. So with this clip, I want to walk you guys through how to create captions and customize them in Premiere. First, you want to make sure that the video you're working on is basically done. You don't want to be adding captions to a video file that you're still working on and then have to edit parts of it out. At that point, it becomes a real hassle of having to clip out captions that are no longer needed. So once the editing is done, you can either manually create captions yourself or you can have it done by an online service like Rev.com or even for free through YouTube. But first, if I go up to File, then to New, then scroll down to Captions, I can create a new caption file manually. From here, I can start to type in the words that I want and then drag and drop that file from my project window to my timeline. This is great if you just need a simple caption or two for one scene, but you can see how this would be a huge pain if you had to caption an entire video manually. So let me get into how we can create automated caption files. To do that, I'll need to export this clip by using the keyboard shortcut Command M so that I can upload the file to either YouTube, which will create captions automatically for free, or as I mentioned, I can use a paid service like Rev.com that will also create a caption file for me. The difference is, is that YouTube does a decent job of transcribing the spoken words into captions, but there's usually quite a number of mistakes. Rev.com, because it's a paid service, does a much better job of transcribing, but with fewer mistakes. So for this video, I'm just going to use YouTube. So I've gone ahead and uploaded the video to YouTube, and it's already been published, but you can set it to private as you're uploading if you don't want it to be seen publicly yet. Next, I can download the subtitle file by going into the video tab, clicking on the video's details, and then going down to subtitles on the left hand side. Then on the far right, you'll see a subtitles column with the word automatic listed. If I click on the three vertical dots next to that, an options menu will come up where I can download the file. Now this file will download as an SBV file which I'll need to convert into an SRT file for me to be able to bring it into Premiere. There's a few websites that can convert caption files, but the one that I like to use is captionsconverter.com. It's pretty simple, just drag and drop the SVV file into the converter, and then make sure it's set to convert into an SRT file. The new file should download automatically, and then after that's completed, we're almost ready to bring this into Premiere. The next step before I can import a caption file is to check my import settings in Premiere. This is where I can customize the look and feel of the captions so that when they get imported, they already will be set to how I want it. So inside Premiere, there's a captions window that you can find by going to window and then making sure that the captions option is checked. Now if I go over to the captions window and look towards the bottom, there's an import settings option. The first thing that we can change here is the type of file that Premiere imports. It's already set to SRT, so I'll leave it at that. Next, we can change the import settings to custom because we want to override the default settings. In the video settings, we can select the standard type of file that will be imported. Typically, subtitles are meant for videos with spoken words in a foreign language, and then the subtitles are in the language of the audience's region. Captions are typically in the same language as the spoken words, but are meant for those who are hard of hearing or maybe prefer to read along as they are listening. In this case, we're going to select the option of open captions. But either way, subtitles or captions work pretty much the same way. And then for the rest of the video settings, we want to match them to the sequence settings of our clip. So 1920 by 1080 pixels in size, my frame rate is 29.97, and the aspect ratio is square 1.0. If you're not sure what your sequence settings are, just go back to your clip and right click on it, then go to the sequence settings, and a new window will pop up with all of that information. And don't worry if the caption settings don't quite match up with your sequence settings. You can always go back and change the import settings if needed, and then you can re-import the captions file. So back in the import settings, with alignment, now we're getting into the actual customizing of the look and feel of the captions. Now each video file is different, and you may want to play around with these settings to get the right look for your video. 
But what typically works for me is, is spacing the rows and columns by 24 and 40. And then with the anchor, I usually have it set to center so that the captions are right in the middle of the screen. And then for the text alignment, I can also set it to center for the same reason. For line spacing and the captions area, I have those set to 50 and 80% each. Next, there's the style settings. You can set your captions to import in a particular font and color. I usually go with a font that's easy to read like Arial or Helvetica, but you can choose pretty much whatever font style that you want. Then you can select either bold, italic, or underline, which is pretty much self-explanatory. Next, there's the font size and color. I usually keep my font size set to 34 because I don't want it to be huge, but I also do want the letters to be big enough for people to easily read. And then I'll also go with the color white as it's usually much easier to read on a darker background. And speaking of backgrounds, you can create a black box behind the caption letters which help the words stand out more. Or you can set it to a different color than black to make something more unique looking. From there, you can adjust the size of the background box to fit whatever you think is best for your video. In the case of this clip, I'm actually going to go without a background and just have the captions by themselves. So I'm just going to leave all the size settings to zero. Next, I'll hit OK to save the settings and now I can import my captions file. From here, using the keyboard shortcut Command I, it will bring up an import window for me to find the captions file. Now that the file is in my project window, I can drag and drop that file onto my timeline. From here, I can pull down the captions to the lower third of my video by going into the effects control panel. At the top where it says position, using my mouse, I can pull the height down so that it lowers the display of the captions on my video. Next, I can scrub through the video to make sure that the captions are appearing how I want them to. If something doesn't look right, I can double click on the captions and then the captions editing window will appear. Now I can go right to the time code where there was a mistake and then I can easily change anything that I need to for that particular caption. I can even alter the color, the size, the font to any of the captions if I wanted to. So that's how you can add captions and subtitles in Premiere Pro. What other kind of issues with captions are you guys having? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can answer them. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and feel free to share with anyone else who might also enjoy it. For more information on Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and freelancing tips, head on over to my website at scottedwardfowler.com and also be sure to check out my other tutorial videos which I've posted on the right side of the screen here. Alright, that's it for me guys, see you in the next video.